Hi everyone! This Friday is National Donut Day, so for Makerspace Monday, we are going to be making yeast-free donuts. This recipe makes about 15 donuts and 15 donut holes. You're going to need flour, sugar, baking soda and baking powder, cinnamon, salt, nutmeg, an egg, butter, and buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you can make your own by combining milk and white vinegar. You're also going to need some oil to fry your donuts in. For equipment, you'll need a pan to fry your donuts in, as well as a cookie sheet lined with paper towels, and if you have one, a wire rack to have a place to cool your donuts after they've cooked. You'll also need two large mixing bowls. For our dry ingredients, take one of the mixing bowls and you're going to add flour, sugar, baking powder and baking soda, and your spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, and salt. Now we're gonna grab ourselves a whisk or a fork and we are going to mix all of our dry ingredients together until they are completely combined. This is very difficult to do with one hand, so I recommend not filming yourself while you're trying to mix because the bowl does tend to move around a little bit. Moving on to our wet ingredients, which we are going to put in a separate bowl. We're going to need our butter, melted. We're going to need our egg, which I've already scrambled a little bit. And we're going to need our buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk at your house and you don't feel like going to get some, you can make your own buttermilk by combining milk with vinegar. Then we're going to take all of those ingredients and put them together and we are going to whisk them until they are combined, just like we did with our dry ingredients. Once your wet ingredients are mixed, you are going to pour them into your dry ingredients and mix them together until it forms a dough. It's gonna be a rather sticky dough, and you could mix it with a fork or a whisk. I started with a whisk, and then I moved to a fork, and then I finally just gave up and used my hands. So it's up to you how you wanna mix it, but make sure it gets to a nice dough consistency. Once your dough ball is formed, you're going to lightly flour your work surface, and then turn the ball of dough out onto it, Using your hands, you can flatten it out into a uh, square, roundish shape about a half an inch thick. You don't want it too thick, but you also don't want it too thin. Before you start cutting out your donut shapes, you're going to want to take your oil and put it into your pan. You want it deep enough that you can not necessarily submerge it, but deep enough to cook it in. And then you're going to turn it on and start heating it up. Now I know donuts are normally circular shaped, so if you have circle shaped cookie cutters or uh, you could use a can, uh, you can cut your donuts out with that. I happen to have these adorable little leaf cookie cutters in a large and small size, so I'm going to use those to shape out my donut and press out the donut holes. So you're gonna take your larger cookie cutter and you're going to put it into the dough like this. And then you're going to take your smaller cookie cutter and put it in the middle for the donut hole. Then you can remove it from the dough pile and then take the smaller one out and now you have two donuts. You can continue cutting out donuts which are with your large and small donut cutters until you can't cut any more. And then you can take your scraps of dough and re-roll them out and continue until all the dough is formed. Now we're gonna test the oil with a donut hole to make sure that it's hot enough to fry our donuts. As you can see, it is bubbling around the edges. So that tells me that it is ready to go. So we're going to cook this for a little while, make sure you keep your eye on it. And when it starts to look golden brown around the edges, you're going to take your fork uh, or other kitchen tool and you are going to flip it over. Let it cook for a little while longer. I would say about a minute. 
but keep your eye on it. When it looks completely golden brown, you can take it out and put it on your wire rack to cool. And now you're ready to do all the rest of your donuts. Make sure you're keeping track of your donuts so that you don't burn them like I kind of did these. I'm just lucky my dad likes extra crispy donuts. Once all your donuts are cooked and cooling on the rack, it's time to decorate. Now, as we all know, there are many different ways to decorate a donut, but I like a simple sugar cinnamon coating. So I've mixed together a little bit of regular sugar and cinnamon and I am just going to take my donuts that are mostly cooled off and I'm going to dredge them in my cinnamon sugar mix. I didn't use too much cinnamon because I know that there's cinnamon in the dough and I didn't want it to overpower everything. So I just used a very little bit of cinnamon. You could continue this process with all your donuts. You could leave some of them plain or you could come up with some other fancy idea for decorating your donuts. I hope you enjoy.